hurricanes, a magnificent and devastating storm, destruction everywhere in its path. What is this hurricane? How is it formed? Where does it come from? So why don't you sit with me as we go into how hurricanes are formed. I'm up meteorologist Dave Osterberg, and now that we're into August and we're getting into the meat of the hurricane season, you can really expand, uh, you know, the potential tropical cyclone genesis, meaning where do these storms form? When you're getting those waves rolling off the coast of Africa, and some of those do, of course, develop. It's this one disturbance that rolled off the coast of Africa, and this one has the potential to develop, you know, potentially a tropical depression or a tropical storm. If it becomes a storm, it's given the name Danielle, moving west-northwest at around 15 to 20 miles per hour. It is disorganized, but trying to show some spin. This is typically what happens when these waves roll off the coast of Africa. How do hurricanes form? This is taken from the National Ocean Service. Warm ocean waters and thunderstorms fuel power-hungry hurricanes. Hurricanes form over the ocean after beginning as a tropical wave, a low pressure area that moves through the moisture rich tropics, possibly enhancing showers and thunderstorm activity. What are the recipes for a hurricane? Well, whipping up a hurricane calls for a number of ingredients readily available in a tropic area. A pre-existing weather disturbance, a hurricane often starts out as a tropical wave. Warm water, Water at least 26.5 degrees Celsius over a depth of 50 meters powers the storm. Thunderstorm activity, thunderstorms turn ocean heat into hurricane fuel. Low wind shear, a large difference in wind speed and direction around or near the storm can weaken it. Mix it all together and you've got a hurricane. Maybe even when all these factors come together, a hurricane doesn't always develop. Hurricanes are powerhouse weather events that suck heat from the tropical waters to fuel their fury. These violent storms over the ocean often begin as a tropical wave, a low pressure area that moves through the moisture rich tropics, possibly enhancing a shower and thunderstorm activity. As this weather system moves westward across the tropics, warm ocean air rises into the storm, forming an area of low pressure underneath. I want you to imagine as you're seeing this air current moving from the tropics. The air is moving across from the land all the way to the sea. And because it's cooled down now, the warm water is causing the heat to rise. As it's rising, it is causing a vortex and thus it is giving it a spin because it is trying to fill that available space which has been created by the low pressure. Science, we've discovered that things heat up at different rates. What does that mean? And as the land heats up, it heats up the air above it. And through science, we've discovered that when air heats up, it spreads out, it expands, and it becomes lighter. And because it becomes lighter, it rises. All this air that's being heated up and rising. Now, take a look over here. The water's cold. Through science, we've discovered that when air gets colder, it gets denser, it gets heavier, it compresses, and that means it sinks. So I have sinking cold air over here, I have rising warm air over here, and as that warm air rises, this sinking cold air sweeps in and takes the spot of the rising warm air. I'm gonna put it here, and you should be able to see yeah, I actually have a small current of wind moving through my tube. You can see the smoke. Just follow the wind current. Yes, that's it. Hurricanes are pushed by a wind current. Notice where the wind currents are situated on Earth. So as you can see by this diagram, there has been pushed westly in the equator line. This is because of the Hadley currents. This is why you have your northern hemisphere and your southern hemisphere rotations. It's simply due to the air pushing it from behind. It's pushing that storm in the direction and thanks to its vertex, it spins. So hopefully you can see on this diagram where it's showing the whole warm air is just rising and due to the cold air taking its place, it's simply spinning.
and that is forced by the winds of the currents. So when you get your direction, it's based on the currents pushing out that storm. Obviously you're gonna get the people now saying, hang on, it's because of Coriolis effect. Well, if you know Coriolis effect, it's just an apparent deviation. It's not actual. If you want to know more about the Coriolis effect and how it works, I will leave a link in the description box below. If, you, if this video was helpful to you, please do hit that like button. It really does help the algorithm. Please don't forget to share and subscribe. Till next time, God bless.